Hi, everyone. So today we have reached to SQL module two, and uh, this is part of SQL level one. As I have explained you in the previous class, that overall in SQL, we are having four levels. And in previous class, I completed module one. Today, we are going to cover module two, and we will set the goal for our, our journey. What are the miles we are going to cover today? So in basic plot, we have basically the first one, first mile is basic plot, and then the second mile is select, third is from, and that's where we will stop. And in the next journey, we will start for the module three. So, in the prior video, I was just explaining that, okay, what is the data, what is database, what is data, and all about all these things. And then we finally reach to the point where we have started storing the data in database. But once you store data in database, how you are going to interact with that? How we have to insert data there, how we can update, how we can modify, how we can remove the data from there. And on top of that, how we can maintain the database object where we are going to store the data. For an example, table, views, and for processing the data like procedure, functions, and all. So today we are just going to learn ABC of the query programming, like that is called SQL. SQL is basically a structured query language, and using SQL, or SQL, we are going to interact with database. So like in any language, for an example, if we can take English, like we have alphabet A, B, C, like that, right? So whatever we are going to learn today, that is the just basic alphabet, like A for Apple, that kind of learning we are going to do in this class today. So whenever we have to retrieve the data from any table, we have to use select and from clause. So let's go back again to our Excel sheet and in the last class, I have created one Excel file, and that I created in HR folder. So our folder where file created is HR. And the file name I created as employee.xl. Right? So if I have to see the data in the file, so if someone will ask you, hey, can you tell me uh, what's the data there in employee sheet? So you will ask, like, okay, where is the file actually? So he will tell you, okay, take in that laptop, that laptop means he will, someone will point out to the system, right? Okay, so suppose in, you are in home and you ask your friend, hey, can you just see what's the data there in the file? So you will say, where is the file? So one laptop is just like kept on uh, a table. So if you have multiple laptops, for an example, and then you will just point out, okay, in that laptop, I store that key. So he will go to that laptop, open it, and then look into what's the data there, right? So that laptop means you know which laptop. 
but how machine will know which computer it has the data? It means we have to have the address of the computer, and that we call it as IP address. So once you know which computer it is, and you know, okay, in C drive, you have HR folder, and you have file name as employee. It means you have the computer name, right? And then you know the drive. Suppose it's in C drive, right? And then you have the folder, HR, and the file. So let's go there quickly. So uh, whatever my friend was pointing out, the laptop, I have the laptop in my hand right now. And then I know, okay, I need to go to the C drive. So let's go to the C drive actually quickly. And HR folder. Okay, so here is employees file and then I can see the data. So what are things I have done here? I went to C drive, I opened the folder, and then I just double click on this sheet and the file open, and now I can see the data, right? So to see, if, to see the data in a file, we have to follow these steps. Now, in database also, the data will be stored like that. So when you will go to database and check the data there, you can, you have to go to the database, you have to go to that particular schema, and then you have to see the data in the table. Same process, whatever I have done in the Excel sheet. So to go to database, we need to know what is the system address, what is the server address, in the sense what is the IP address or server name, and then only we can go to the database and look into the table. So right now, my table is in, so let's talk about database. So I have server IP address, okay? Or you can have the server name as well. And if you are installing database in your system, so you can just, you can call it a local host. And my database, name is ORCL and my schema name is HR, okay? And my table name is employees. Got it? So in case of seat also, I was having folder as HR, file name employee, it was in the C drive and computer name. Same way in database also, you need to have server name, database name, schema name, and table name. Now here it was simple in the seat, right? You just went and opened there. But to get the data from database, you need to have a tool where you need to log in, and then only you will able to see the data into a table. So I'm going to use SQL Developer here. It's a tool to get the data from Oracle, SQL Server, and many databases. So I'm just going to use Oracle database, okay? And in one video, I will just cover how you can install the database and all. I will create a separate video for that. So I'm just going to log into SQL Developer, and here, for any database, you need to add the connection, okay? So here you have to give the connection like name and then schema name, password, uh, server name, 
port number and database name. Got it? So here I already set up all these things and then I connected to the connection called sandbox. Now from sandbox, how we can see the data from any table? So I told you that my table name is employee, but we know the employee table name. Let's see how many columns are there. So for that, you just need to write describe table name. So I can just do employee. And if you will do control enter, it will just give you what are the columns are there in the table. Got it? So I'm just going to use connection as sandbox and if you will run it. So this time it's running on the database. And now you can see these many columns I have in the table. These are the data types that I'm going to cover in some other videos. So now how I can see the data, that's the main question here. In this table, in Excel sheet also you saw, we have these many columns, employee ID, first name, last name, and all these. In database also, we have these many columns. How I can see the data there? So, Two words, A for apple, B for ball. Here, S for select and F for wrong. So select for what? Select for getting all columns. And from for what? Got it. So we just have to write select whatever columns are needed and from from which table we are going to get the data. So I'm just going to write select and I'm going to just see hey, what are the employee ID we have and what is their first name. You can see all the columns here, right? The command I just executed called describe table. And then from, from which table I'm going to check the data, guys? From employees. So you just have to select these two lines and just click here. So now you can see all the data, whatever there is in the employees table, it has just displayed. And I have all together 100 seven records. Got it? If I want to get all the columns, what we have to do? We just have to write select, a strict, a strict means everything, all the columns from employees. So in this case, you will get all the columns, what you are there in the table. So let's quickly recap that, whatever we ha I have explained you guys today. So in the basic clause, I have explained you select and from, select to get columns and from to get, from which table we are going to get the data. Got it? And then select syntax, if you will see, select a strip from table name. That's how you will get the data. And from, you will just type the table name. Got it? So I have shown you one example, and you will see the data like this. So that's it for today, guys. And uh, I, I have shown you this example already, and we can just quickly recap what are things we learned today. So based in basic clause, select and from. That's it for today. If you guys will have any question concern, you can always 
send us mail messages or you can put your comment there and if you like this video you can subscribe it and click on like button and we are coming with the next video there we will cover the module number three and that is the basic filter okay thanks to all of you and we'll see you soon in the next video